Today I'm going to be talking about uh, the immutable pipeline. It's, it's um, a process that we have been playing around with lately at Collective Idea um, for one of the uh, applications that we own called Dead Man Snitch. Um, just a quick little advertisement. Dead Man Snitch is a, is a monitoring tool for cron jobs. Um, you hit a URL and we do our best to tell you when things aren't working. So to begin with, um, the immutable pipeline is itself just basically a, a deployment pipeline for immutable servers. Um, the idea of immutable servers is that servers themselves are, um, at least the way that we've been seeing it, servers themselves can be treated as processes, as um, essentially compiled, uh, like macro compiled binaries, like a collection of binaries themselves. So a um, uh, little bit about immutable servers. So immutable servers are, yes, actually immutable. Um, immutable is a term that comes from, um, or immutable objects is a term that comes from software development in that an immutable object is an object that um, once instantiated, once created, doesn't get changed at all. And so um, this, is, this is a common thing like strings. Like you initialize a string, you say, this is the state of this object. And then from that point on, that object itself should always represent that straight string, so like, or that state. So if you initialize a string foo, it will always be foo from here until the end of the, the program run. Um, so servers, to be immutable, means that um, once we've booted them, once we've configured them, we don't make any changes to them. Um, we tend to, we use Chef, um, but for immutable servers, we don't run convergence on them ever again. Um, we don't modify config files. Um, we're, I mean, we're, we're a consultancy and we've had uh, a number of clients and we deal with a lot of people and every now and then we'll see somebody who decides that doing development on the server is a great idea. So they'll log into the server and they'll make a few changes and then next thing you know this server has got some weird state or um, you know, it's, it's essentially a mutant. It, um, it, it has code that isn't, isn't in the isn't in Chef, isn't in the repository, and so when we need to make changes to that server, if, we ever, if that server ever goes away, we can't easily get that state anymore. Um, one of the things uh, that we do is anytime that you can do something like sudo into a box, you have the ability to um, make a change to that server. And so the idea behind, part of the idea behind immutable servers is that um, once you have booted this thing and once you've, uh, once you've configured it, um, that can be easily replicated, it can be destroyed and brought back up. So, just like immutable objects, we need to instantiate the state of a server. And so our servers, we do a process when we boot them um, of configuration. And the configuration step should be as minimal as possible. Um, it shouldn't require you to ever go and hit, this, hit uh, the network to, to figure out. This is actually um, an upstart job that we use in um, uh, one of the dead man snitch services that it takes the user data provided by EC2 that we set as uh, simply a JSON string um, and actually does the configuration of our application. Um, this includes things like configuring external services, um, database, AMQP um, logging services. So um, this, is a, this is trimmed down slightly. We also include um, like talking off to, to Logly or Paper Trail or a, a service like that and making sure that you know, syslog and G and, and 
the dependent services have been properly restarted. And so this is run at boot um, and never run again, ideally. Um, there's, there are some uh, packages like CloudInit that come in with um, Ubuntu's base images that include uh, a version of this, but we, uh, it's a, a simple enough thing to hack together that we, we can build our own. Mutable servers are consistent. And um, the idea here is, is images themselves, um, as I'll be talking about in a little bit, um, can be booted up at some point in the future. And as long as, let's say, backing services um, are still there, they can, um, they can still be run. They can still be executed. Um, six months, two years in the future, you can spin up a new instance of, of a compiled image and it should still boot. Immutable servers are expendable. Try and keep any sort of state outside of them inside of backing services. Now, this, this may not work for something like a database service, um, but, uh, or a database server, but a backing service could be a EBS volume. It could be um, a hard drive volume that actually stores the data that can be detached from the server, reattached to a new server. We want our servers to be able to be uh, blown away and recreated uh, constantly um, to make sure that uh, no changes, no mutations that happen to them um, live for very long. So a little about, bit about the pipeline itself. Uh, the pipeline is really taken out of a lot of the continuous integration, continuous deployment processes for software. Um, we have been seeing servers themselves more as binaries and, and more as uh, processes that you run that you, like w something we traditionally deal with when you're you know, compiling Nginx or compiling um, your application, like if it's written in C or Go or something along those lines. And so the, the traditional, um, well, I guess traditional is fairly new, but uh, deployment process is one of compile, test, deploy continuously. Every commit, we compile, we test, we deploy to staging, we deploy to production. The compilation step for us and this is, uh, we're, we have a, a service called uh, WinTrap inside of DMS, or Dead Man Snitch, that um, is the, the actual collection service for when um, what a cron job checks in. And that is software. It has, uh, it just happens to be written in Go. Um, we compile it uh, through our continuous integration server into a binary. Uh, we run tests on it um, before uh, deploying that, that binary out to S3. And then we actually start the compilation process of um, our immutable server. And we are building uh, AMIs, we're building uh, EC2 images um, in this process. And this is something that could work for Docker, it could work for... Um, uh, I haven't used, uh, so, but some of the other providers that, that allow you to generate an image, boot from that image. Um, the compilation step uses Packer, and um, we use Ubuntu as our, as our base. Um, we have a couple shell scripts that just do a little bit of um, uh, initial, like the apt get update, the apt get uh, upgrade process, um, and uh, a little bit of cleanup as far as you know, deleting the provisioning user and things like that. But otherwise, everything else is done in Chef. And with this compile step, our goal is to end up with an image that 
we'll never have to run Chef on again. And so uh, our Chef cookbooks and our Chef build is, is uh, fairly static. We don't ever have to worry about uh, what the state of the system is in um, prior to running Chef. Uh, because our, our base is always that, um, that fresh Ubuntu ISO, you know, 1204.01 or 1404.03 or whatever, you know, the next one is that, that we pick as our base. So that makes our chef cookbooks quite a bit more, uh, uh, quite a bit simpler because we don't have to deal with the corner cases of uh, some config that we added six months ago or six weeks ago that um, may still exist or have, having deleted. And we know that every time we compile a new image, we are starting from uh, a clean base. So like I said, we use Packer. This is, um, <laughs> I feel bad I t mentioned Packer in my, uh, in my talk, but we're not actually gonna be covering it too much. Uh, this, is, um, this is the actual Packer file that we use for a uh, wind trap. Um, since it looks like I'm gonna have some time, I'm gonna go over it real quick. Um, we do all of our building with uh, Amazon EBS. Um, Packer is sort of broken down into uh, builders, provisioners, um, the builders section. Um, we use uh, the AMI is just a one of the um, canonical uh, Ubuntu images that they release uh, quite regularly with, with updates supplied. Um, like I said, we use Chef Solo. Um, yeah, nothing too exciting. Now, the images that we build are a container of the application itself, of like the this, this service, for example, WinTrap. Um, the image holds everything it needs to run an instance of that application. Um, the application it itself, any internal dependencies, um, let's say Memcache or Redis or um, Nginx, for example. That container, that server, is essentially a macro compilation of all of those, all of those services. Um, we, uh, we've been doing some, uh, some playing around with, some, with uh, application servers, um, something that's been fairly popular in the uh, Java community, where um, you've got something like what a JBoss or um, you know, we're Ruby developers, so we've been, we've been using Torquebox, and that is this, this whole setup of like it's got a messaging bus and it's got a caching layer um, and, it, and you compile your war and you just deploy it and you push it out to this thing with a configuration file and like all of the, like you can build a fairly complex application that is easily deployable as a single container. And we've been seeing, um, we, we like this idea of the immutable servers as being these, these containers as well so that Let's say you, you wanted to have an LRU cache in your code or it needed it. You could implement that yourself or you could uh, just build a memcache, use a memcache client and get a lot of that for free, that kind of thing. Or you want to build your uh, application um, uh, as a series of workers uh, behind a message bus. You can easily um, have your image contain all of those workers and every single time you uh, do a compilation, it, it sets up all those workers and sets up a message bus like uh, internally that you can, you can work off of. So test. Now, we've got this image that is a, essentially a snapshot of the, the code, a snapshot of the, um, everything put together at a particular point in time or uh, for a particular commit. Um, the testing phase is black box testing, um, where you can spin up an instance 
And because it's configurable, uh, you can say something, you could use a tool like Postgression to spin up a uh, Postgres database in the background, seed it with a set of information, um, run your, like, boot up an instance of, of the AMI with that, and then talk directly to the database to seed data or uh, do test assertions, that kind of thing. Um, the testing process is a lot of spin it up, make a bunch of requests, um, make sure everything is working, make sure that the, the contract that we've defined for the application, the APIs and things are uh, continuing to function. And then finally we deploy. And in our continuous integration setup, we deploy to staging constantly. We only promote certain builds to um, production um, just to match the other development that's going on with the application. Deployment is a process similar to something like um, doing an Nginx upgrade. We spin up new instances. Um, we have a load balancer instead of a shared socket. Um, but we tell the load balancer that, hey, we've got these new instances. You should add them into the rotation. And then once they're up, we, we remove the old instances from the rotation. All right, so um, that's about it for my talk. Chris Gaffney, Gaffney C on Twitter and GitHub, and uh, I work at Collective Idea, and that's that. All right, well, thank you very much.